It's that time to take you through the wonderful world of the arts in this amazing August month. We've seen many artists doing incredible things and this episode is no different. So let's check out our lineup. We see the last Giddy Cultural Fiesta, which is a youth exhibition. Then two incredible artists are exhibiting at the Affinity Art Gallery, also in Lagos. We'll see that and more after we take our wordsmith for this week. A warm welcome to the show. I'm Melinda Akinwami. Our wordsmith for this week is by Chidioke Chidiebube Jr. called Assurance. Assurance. We are all looking for comfort, for peace and bliss, even when we fail or make mistakes, hence the attachments to people regardless of their inconsistencies and unfulfilled promises. When we falter and are at our all-time low, still holding on to our dreams and refusing to let go, looking for the light at the end of our dark and lonely tunnel, a positive word comes forth making us feel better and all. That's our assurance. The warmth in the cold, the relief in distress, it could be from parents, siblings, friends or strangers. It gives us a newfound belief when we are in danger of losing our focus and our hope when it all seems hopeless. The declaration of confidence in our vision and our able wingman on our quest and mission. That's our assurance. Nice words there by our wordsmith and the art to accompany it is really delightful. So let's begin the show by experiencing this exhibition, which has been done by two artists at the Affinity Art Gallery here in Lagos. The arrangement of the works of art in this exhibition at the Affinity Art Gallery in Lagos is sure to catch anyone's iPods on sand or placed on a white holder to the walls beside paintings to other things that add to the aesthetics by two female creatives from different worlds who salute their roots. Vernacular homage to architecture and design basically brings together a Nigerian and a South African artist um, who work with abstract art. They're working within the, um, the confines of abstract art and yeah, and also you know creating pieces that you know remind them of where they're coming from and also what their environments look like. of this exhibition is vernacular art and texture which is trying to put us back to where we are from when art was a was as a result of who we are where people created art artists created art as a result of who they were and how it serves their community so this exhibition is basically taking the viewers back to you know ancient art, the practice of ancient art, but in a very contemporary way because we live in a contemporary time, so we have to interpret it in a contemporary way. The 
The trip down memory lane is revealed in the designs and shapes of the ceramics on display to the rendition of the paintings which speak to the beauty of each culture. The earthy tones and attention to details are anything but average as they communicate the universal language of art. to be very honest. Um, although we're very different, we have like different ways of expressing ourselves, which is why we wanted to have this exhibition. Because the things that you see with the South African and her art is very reminiscent of the things that you see in Anne's pieces as well. Um, her name is Lulama, and then Anne, who is the Nigerian in this exhibition, builds pieces from clay. Um, and so just seeing those works together in conversation, when you look around the gallery, you're kind of like reminded about how vernacular Africa really is and how our um, narratives are almost the same. You know, our stories are very similar and all of that, so yeah. Everyone who has come to this exhibition cannot tell if the artist is South African or the artist is Nigeria, which means that what was taught by their grand grandmothers is literally the same thing. This is why culture is so beautiful and heritage is so beautiful, because end of the day we realize that what has been taught by our mothers has been transmitted all over Africa, from south up until west now. The work is amazing, it's beautiful. Uh, just hearing the concept around it, that it's two artists who are born in the same year, never met each other, and yet the synergy in their work is so beautiful. It's the earth colors, the colors that they use, it's, it's very encapsulating, it just, it draws you in. So the work in the space is amazing, and what's great about it is that it's not just a particular artist, but it's African artists showcasing their talents. I decided to do clay because it's something I could connect to it. So the thing is, I've done other forms of art before. I've painted before. I've painted, I've done murals. But with clay, I feel a deep connection to it because I feel like clay is the center of everything. It's the center of our existence as human beings. We come from clay, we return back to clay. So being able to create art from you know something that is of history and significant to us is very important for me and that's why I use this medium in my practice. The artists talk about their creative process and some of the works in this exhibition which tell the African story. behind me, this was behind me, the to web of existence. So it basically tells a story of our existence as human beings, birth, reborn, reincarnation. Because you know the thing is that not every single thing that has been lost or everything that has died has found a way to come back. Because even as human beings, when we die, you know, we, we give nutrients to the earth and it grows on trees. So like, it's just the circle of being reborn, the circle of life, things going and coming back, although they might come in different forms, but they definitely still come back again. So that's what I was trying to interpret. It is a very long process. It actually takes like a lot of time. It takes, like the pieces that are here today it took me about six months to create, yes, yeah, so it's a very long process. <laughs> It's 
African arts, you know, we're Africans and we tell stories through our arts. And there's so many similarities in that most of the time the arts is what's passed down from generations. So you get grandmothers and grandfathers telling stories and you have artists um, recreating that through their work. So if you look at South African art and you look at Nigerian art, I think at the essence of it, it's African art. You see so many similarities, you see so many, the background is similar, the story is similar, you draw similarities from one to the other, even the use of color. So I think there's, there's a lot of similarities between the arts. I'm inspired by things around me. I'm inspired by the stories of people I hear. I'm inspired by history. It's very important for me to be able to connect to where I'm from, you know, as an African, as a Nigerian. And that's why I create pieces in this kind of clay, red clay. Because like, this is us. This is us as Africans, this is us as Nigerians. So I try to create pieces from that inspiration. vernacular homage to architecture and design shows that the traditions in Africa may be ancient, but the beauty and stories embedded in them gives a greater respect and appeal. interesting combination and there's more where that came from but that will be online where you've been sending your wonderful works of art and these are the works of art you sent this time around let's begin with Akintayo Damilola's digital painting called blissful smile And another piece called Joyful Leap is done with oil on canvas by Eriga Opako. Fashion is the title is done by Kevet Fred on mixed media. Then Emmanuel Ate has this oil on canvas piece called Black Beauty. Light or Inner is an acrylic on canvas work done by Francis Zazinanu. Then Homework is an oil on canvas piece done by Shola Ogumbi. Our culture, our heritage is created by Uye Sam Angel with pen on pelican paper. Samuel Eto has his pen and ink on paperwork called Patterns of Samuel Eto. Then Joy. Idigo has this acrylic on canvas piece called Kanini. Finally, Will to Shine 2021 is an oil on canvas work done by Adi Tolu. And those are the works of art you sent in this week. We appreciate you for sending them in and encourage you to keep them coming. So to come on the program, we see the last giddy cultural fiesta by Young Hands. Join us again. My art responds to the dynamics of continuity, 
change in my neighborhood and global constituency. of colors is what they decided to target this time around as young creatives put together this exhibition at the Freedom Park in Lagos. The Lasgidi Cultural Art Exhibition has been running for many years now. A platform to give budding artists still sharpening their teeth in tertiary institutions an opportunity to have their works displayed to a larger audience. This year, it's a festival of colors. We go to different universities to um, talk to students. I get engaged with the lecturers. I write a letter to the department saying I'm looking for your talent students that can really paint. So we create like a workshop for them. That's where we select the students that are really very talented and creative and all that. And we always leave it open also for the upcoming ones, maybe in their year one or year two in various universities across the South, South, Southeast and Southwest to come up and when they're more developed, we now bring them into workshop, the workshop, train them properly and from there we select our best few and we exhibit their work out. It's free for all, there's no student paying anything. It's like a youth empowerment to me, giving back also to me. And, and, and I feel that Nigerian youth have a lot of things to, to creativity, innovation, things that are really talented. They just need a kind of exposure and all that. And that's where I come in and that's why, you know, I said, okay, I want to promote this today. I want to help them in every way we can to promote up and coming artists. The young creatives exhibiting are fascinated by people and the environment. They use diverse medium to capture it. The organizers are thrilled about this consciousness and technology has been used to get the message beyond these walls. I'm also glad that um, the curator is also opening them up to go beyond borders, to go beyond the borders of Nigeria. They're opening them up digitally on the international platform to put them on the internet so that they can have people who would look. Right now, a lot of people can travel. Right now, we don't have a lot of social gathering. We don't have that platform for people to come together because of the COVID reality that we have. And so the curator coming up with that idea to open them up via the internet is a very, very, very impressive and very laudable um, idea. The art is we have different universities here. We have Unilag, we have Yabatech, we have um, Ilefe, University of um, Ife, and we have Ondo University. And as you can see, they're really, really talented. I love most of their works um, they've displayed this year. And um, some of them have my favorites as usual. And also this year, we've been able to have a lot of females now, which I'm also excited about, participated in this year's own. And especially from Unilag, you know, I've, we've, I've been so impressed that every year this student just keep impressing me, showing me their creativity and innovation and all that. So I'm so proud of my students. And I still have upcoming students that have been with us, you know, for like two years, three years till they graduate, because it's all about the university student is to help them improve, showcase their work and, you know, lift them up there. and. Make, put more of a soft landing for them into the art world, even though after they leave the university. But as you can see, all my students are really talented. And I have a painting here. The painting, my painting is a pastel painting on canvas which I try to use one of the series of work against all odds. And I tell you the work, um, She's to Smile. Um, She's to Smile, the aspect of the whole 
pandemic issues and the um, kidnapping and the only negativity is happening around, you understand? Um, the best way is to be optimistic and not let the whole issue to get into you as a person. So as an artist, I'm not just going to document what is happening or stay making reference to what is happening in the community. What I'm going to do is just to be like a hope or tell people to see the lights and not that it's just the darkness. This work is titled For Me and For You. Um, it's basically just talking about sharing, giving, like if the world was, um, if everybody in the world was open-handed and open-minded, like people weren't acquiring so much and they were able to give and they were able to be selfless, um, I think the world would actually be a better place for everyone to live in. They are also encouraged to pursue their creative dreams when they graduate from school. We are very proud of what they're doing and we are also um, happy to encourage them so that they begin to see that being in that space of being an artist is not um, seen as a never do well job. As, um, it's actually something that can yield a lot of um, money and opportunities for them in the, on the long run. And that's why we have recognized that and we are putting our weight behind them. It also helps for them to send signals to the entirety of our populace that we need to preserve that which we have through a form of art. A lot of stories are being told with these artworks. Some are inspiring, some are for us to are thought provoking. Some are just expressing what's going on, the realities on ground. Um, everyone has their own story behind this artwork that they've put together. And all of those stories is still talking about the society that we live in. And we need to make them feel appreciated that they go in there and they're bringing out something within them that speaks to our world. This youth art exhibition at the Freedom Park in Lagos has vibrancy and color written all over it. A Generation Next project to ensure that Nigeria's artistic space shines brighter in the future. Now let's get a sneak peek of what to look forward to the next time you tune in. Coming up in Art House, KO Gallery holds another exhibition by two artists exploring different topics. Plus, we have our wordsmith, your works of art, and more. Get the gist when you tune in next time. Your art house experience doesn't have to end when the show is not on television. Interact with us on our various social media platforms. See any edition of Art House on our website or YouTube page. Join our very interactive Facebook page by joining the group on Art House on Channels. We're everywhere. That's Art House today. Thank you so much for spending time with us. And I've been seeing all your awesome comments on our channels on a Facebook page, our Art House on Facebook page, where you have been sending your images and your poetry as well. But just in case you missed this episode, you also know where to find us on our YouTube page, where all the other editions of Art House are lined up for your viewing pleasure. I'm Melinda Akinlami, encouraging you to stay safe and keep being creative. <music>